honestly super difficult to shoot skis in a van. I'm like, I'm like 5'10", the van's probably 6'2". Um, so to fit, you know, six foot skis in the van, pretty difficult. I had to get a little bit creative. I have my camera like totally jerry-rigged on this side of the van and I just laid six pairs of my Armada Fleet um, back here. I don't usually shoot this way, but I think it works, kind of cool. But in this video, I don't really know what this video is, this episode's gonna be. It's not really like a review of the skis. It's almost just kind of like, in a way, it's a little bit kind of just like the history of the Armadas that I used and kind of just showing you guys the skis that I have. Now that I have everything pretty much set up, I've had the chance to use everything at least once. Um, so it's not really like an official review of each ski, um, but just, I don't know, just hanging out, talking about the six pairs of Armadas that I have. Not all these skis are in commission. Um, these skis are basically dated back from 2017 to now. So some of these skis I've used before, some of these skis are active in my quiver, but I am not sponsored by Armada. I have no affiliation at all with Armada. I have bought all of these skis with my own money throughout the years, just because I really do like the skis. I like the brand. I just kind of like everything about it. And myself, I'm a, I'm a very loyal consumer. Once I find something that I like, I typically don't stray from that. So I know there's tons of great options of skis out there, but I just love Armada. I love how like the lineup is like very sequential and and in a way like makes sense. So no plans on, on changing ski brands at all. The second thing I wanna mention is that the last four pairs of Armadas that I got, which I got all this year, I got them at 55% off, which makes it incredibly difficult not to purchase the skis at that price, especially um, as I'm doing this full time, as I'm doing this to earn my living, both from a business standpoint, and then also for more content for you guys, um, it actually makes, it makes more sense than you think to get a, a few more pairs of skis, but I was not paying 800, 900, 1000 bucks per pair of skis for these. Um, a lot of these skis I was getting um, for right around 375 to 400 dollars. So a lot more digestible before you guys go and run and do all the math and see how much money I spent on skis. 55% off is a pretty smoking deal. It's better than um, what Papa Joe can get through the mogul team at Proform. So I think that's all I have for disclaimers. And lastly, just so, so you guys know, I am 5'9", 5'10", and height am about 180 pounds. Um, so, you know, I will be putting the length of each one of these skis as they come up with the underfoot and stuff like that. But just maybe to help you guys if you're looking for skis um, in terms of what my height is and what size ski I'm rocking. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start with the skinny skis at 98 underfoot and we're gonna go all the way up to 133 underfoot. These are um, the Armada El Dante Zero 98 underfoot. This is actually a limited edition ski that I used um, for a very long time. This was the very first Armada that I got. I used this primarily in Colorado back in graduate school, but this is probably the most unique ski that I have of all the Armadas, just what it's actually made out of, sort of how the ski was designed. This was really meant to be a park ski, but also give you the ability to jib around the mountain. So it's kind of like an all mountain park ski that they don't make this anymore. And it's actually based off the um, Idolo, which is Henrik Harlow's park ski. Um, so in terms of pressability and, and stiffness, this is a very, very soft ski. But this ski really opened me up to sort of that a lot more freestyle as skiing. I came from a really stiff Nordica before this. So this is my first introduction to Armada. And, um, while the ski is a bit shorter, at 177 uh, centimeters long, the ski really uh, served me well to kind of move all around the mountain. But um, as I progressed as a skier, um, I noticed that the 98 underfoot just wasn't really enough uh, as I got more into big mountain skiing, which is where really I moved up into the Armada JJ in the next ski in my Arm Armada journey. But this is a unique ski because it is limited edition, one of a kind I probably won't ever get rid of this, but this ski is, is basically shot. You don't really want to use this anymore, but super cool. Um, and that's how we're going to kick this off. Armada El Dante Zero 98 underfoot. So now moving up from the 98 underfoot, we have, oh my God, I can barely fit six pairs of skis across here. We have the Armada ARV 106s, the 2022 or 2023 model, the most recent model, AKA the Stoke Crows. I've only used these a handful of times and I've honestly had a lot of fun when I have used them. I've been going through 
some uh, trouble with the bindings on these, but I got these as a uh, smaller ski because I've been using the JJ so regularly that I thought maybe it'd be nice to have something a little bit smaller to help us uh, maybe get by in the groomers and just those kind of early and late season days. But I just haven't had the best experience on them so far, but that's primarily due to the binding on this side of the Armada STH-16. It's pretty stiff, which, you know, is kind of a welcomed addition to for an all mountain sort of just hard charging ski. So if you're looking for something that's super pressable or maybe fun in the park, um, this might not be the right ski for you, but what where this really does shine is, is, is a true all mountain ripper. Um, it still has that really light and airy Armada freestyle feel to it, but um, you know, it's got a lot of girth and sort of rigidity underneath it. This does have the poplar ash core, which I do really like in the JJ. It allows, it, you know, makes the ski a bit heavier, but it makes it so you can really power down uh, the mountain and just make sure you can get through just about anything. So we're calling these the Stoke Crows. I love the top sheet on them. It's absolutely beautiful design. Just haven't really got these dialed in, haven't got these sorted out, but uh, super stoked to have these in the quiver. And uh, this would probably be one of my most used skis if it wasn't for the uh, Armada JJ. If you guys have been around the, the channel for even just last season, this is probably, you know, I will frame these skis. I will put them in my coffin with me. These are the, the Stoke Kings. This is the, I think it's a 2019 or 2018. I'm not exactly sure the year, but this is the Armada ARV 116 JJ. Um, this ski kind of started it all for me once I moved into this platform. I feel like my skiing really, really progressed and just um, kind of stepped up to the next level once I got a fat board underneath my feet. This is a dedicated POW ski. However, I've used these and basically um, as, a, as a daily daily driver, daily ski, I've used these in just about any condition imaginable. On these, I have the Tyroli Attack 16s, and this whole combo is just something that uh, is just kind of an epic epic ski for me. The Stoke King, the top sheet is just, I mean, I don't think they've, in my opinion, there hasn't been a more beautiful top sheet than the King here with the lime green bindings. It just really pops out. Put these on your feet, it almost just reminds me like a bulldozer that I can really just power through anything, but also on those really soft days, um, you know, you have a great pow ski. So that's why I've always liked this ski. I just feel like for big mountain stuff, um, it's a lot of fun. And you know, obviously it's not meant for groomers, but I don't want to say they've been replaced. I think they just retired. Um, and as we move into the, uh, the young rejuvenated uh, Stoke Elks here, these are this year's model of the ARV JJ116. Same exact ski, there is a few refinements on it, but for the most part, it's a very similar similar ski, just a new year, new top sheet, which again, I mean, this is a beautifully detailed top sheet, um, but for some reason I have a soft spot for the King, but uh, got the Stoke Elk, got some driver up here in the house. You got people sort of skinning up the track. I mean, just a, another beautiful ski. It really pops in the snow with the orange, which is cool, on the uh, Tyroli Attack 16. So. Uh, my go-to binding for a long time. This has been really my most used ski this year. This probably will be my most used ski throughout the year. Daily sort of drivers right here, this 116 JJ. And um, perhaps some of my favorite features of the ARV line is the edgeless tip and tail, both on the 106 and the 116, the smear tech on the tips and tails. And even though they are a bigger ski, there's a lot of pressability. It really makes it so it feels like you have a playful park ski, playful pow ski on your feet, um, but also has a good amount of rocker here to help you float in the pow, stuff like that. So I just feel like for my style of skiing, for what I enjoy doing, the ARV line has really been beneficial for me as a skier. And I just feel like I have a lot of confidence when I have these armadas underneath my feet. So, in my opinion, that like 96, 98 to 116 range is really like the bulk, um, the bulk underfoot that um, most people are going to need at a resort. I mean, you don't really need much more than a 116 for a pow day. Um, and if you're out west, I don't really recommend much less than a 96, to be honest, for an all mountain ski. So these next two skis are a little bit more niche and for lack of a better term, just ridiculous, but uh, they've honestly been a, an absolute blast to use. And at the end of the day, that's what skiing is about. It's about having fun and enjoying yourself. So um, these have been my most recent additions and also um, the skis that I have the least experience on. And I'm gonna start here with the Armada White Walker 121 
Um, this is the Sammy Carlson ski. This thing, let me guys, let me just tell you guys something. This is the sickest ski I've ever used. And it's, it's honestly hard to describe, but it's like the entire construction of the ski is a little bit different, but it has a lot of the same features that I'm used to, just even more exaggerated. Probably the most, the biggest difference is the actual makeup of the ski. This is the Karuba core, um, which is a lot softer material. Um, and the actual edge wall is considerably thinner than the JJ. So one of the biggest things I noticed between this and the JJ was just how much softer and how much um, less bulldozer feel this had than the JJ. Sometimes when you get in those hard clumps of snow, I felt like this ski couldn't take it as much as something like the JJ could. But um, this ski doesn't have an edge basically from about a foot up from the binding. So in terms of buttering and pressability, the freestyle aspect of this ski is unmatched for 121. It doesn't even feel like you have a fat ski on, but um, you know, if you don't know who Sammy Carlson is, check out some of his vi videos to get a sense of why um, he designed this ski so you can get a sense of his style. But the times I've used this ski, I've had the most fun on snow because it is so freestyle orientated. It is so light, but it also is just an absolute ripper of a ski. So I think if I were to have one POW ski, I would probably pick this white walker just because it, it fits the boxes of a lot of different things however i find like where this might struggle a little bit is if you need an edge for any reason if you're on any hard pack there just quite literally is no edge up here um and also some of those variable conditions you might find at a resort these could struggle a little bit more i mean sammy carlson basically just goes in the back country and he's just on untouched snow so that's what i think this ski was really meant for but it's the zero line innovation lab like this ski is an absolute monster. So when I bring these out, I just know it's gonna be an absolute fun day. I mean, you can, all you have to do is just think about leaning back and next thing you know, you're completely tail butter doing a wheelie looking at the ceiling. Um, or if you just start to throw yourself forward, you will be in a total slow rotating, slow rotisserie bird, melted buttery smooth uh, nose butter. And like, I mean, sometimes it feels like you could just break this ski, it's so soft, but absolutely a hoot, I mean. I almost didn't get this ski and I'm super glad that I did because I feel like it's a, it's a nice fill in from the 116 to the ARG. And now lastly, and most ridiculously, if you guys watched the Snowbird video yesterday, I broke out the Armada ARG 2s for the first time. And let me tell you guys, from a POW ski perspective, there's no better ski than the ARG. The rocker on this thing, I'll see if I can make this better to show, but there's essentially no camber in the ski and the rocker starts right here. So, I mean, you're just floating over the snow without even trying, without even trying to, which is the whole point of a POW ski. So complete um, entire rocker, both on the tip and tail. This is a 187 centimeter, only comes in one length. So it's 133 underfoot, 187. Um, length so it's an absolute beast of a ski but when you're skiing deep pow um, the wider and longer ski you can get the the better experience you're gonna have it's still part of the zero lineup which is really cool because it still has that freestyle sort of progressive um, thought behind the ski but it's um, it's, a, it's a reverse side cut ski meaning that it's actually narrower up at the top and widest point is underneath the foot so um, the idea with that is to give you maximum flotation. The part where there's like the most pressure and, and surface area is the widest part underneath your foot. But um, I was a little bit taken back just how heavy these skis were. I think each ski is about six pounds without the binding. So you put these on your feet and it's like, you know, you, you feel it for sure. You're not, it's a little bit harder to get the ski up to grab. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to butter around. It's very, very stiff. There's an edge all the way through. There's no smear tech on the ski. So, there are some components of this ski that is missing from a lot of the ARV lineup that I'm used to and even the White Walker. But um, I mean, if you're just going out to just crush some POW, I don't think there's a better option than this. Construction of this is also the Poplar Ash Core. So it's the same material that is found in the ARV 116 JJ and also the ARV 106. So from that regard, I think that's why I did like this ski a lot. It's very rigid. Like you can really bust through a lot of stuff. It felt like a very hard charging ski for the size, um, but you're just, you're kind of lacking a little bit on the freestyle aspect. They do make um, an ARG2 UL, which is considerably lighter. It's the ultralight version with the Karuba core, which is found in the White Walker. So lots of terminology I'm throwing out there, lots of different 
um, words, but I, I think the Armada website does a really good job of breaking down the different skis and stuff like that. But um, if you're only looking for a POW slasher, the ARG is a very good option, but don't get this ski and then come back and say, man, I'm surprised it couldn't turn on the groomers. Well, you know what? This is not meant to turn on groomers. Like this is meant to ski pow, go right to the lift, go back up and ski some more pow. I realized the quiver is definitely a bit excessive and ridiculous, but um, for the longest time I had just used the 116 um, JJ and you know you guys would always say why don't you get another ski like you know how are you dailying the 116 so I essentially went from having one ski to four in one season and so it's been it's been fun getting to know the different types of skis but I, I also am not um, I don't think you necessarily need a bunch of different skis like you can just get the 106 would be a great one ski quiver that can do a little bit of everything if you're into more big mountain pow skiing you know, I used the 116 for years and the 116 only, um, whether it was pre-season, post-season, like doesn't matter. But like I said, at this point in my career and where I'm at um, with the YouTube channel and stuff like this, it made a little bit more sense to, to extend myself, uh, and try new skis, both for my sake and for your guys' sake as well. But I, I also get asked frequently, like why, you know, why I like Armada. And I, I don't really have like a, a great answer for that question. I just think it's a, um, a ski that reminds me of like the times I used to ski park, um, but also a ski that that is supportive for the big mountain charging stuff like that. And like I said, I just, when I find something that works, I don't typically try to change it and mess with it. And for the longest time, the JJ has been a great ski. And I just feel like um, to really get to know a ski, to really get good on a ski, you gotta just use the ski consistently. And I'm going on about um, five years, just only on Armadas. Um, and I just find like, um, as a skier, um, confidence is, is essentially everything on the hill from a progression standpoint. And so having the Armadas underneath my feet just makes it so I know whatever I'm about to drop into, it's not, it's not gonna be a ski issue. It's gonna be my, my issue or, or something else. So having something I can trust underneath my feet is a super important thing. And um, at the end of the day, I'm out here to have fun and enjoy my life, right? So um, if that's with their Armada or another ski brand, like, that's what it is. But for, for right now, I, I really love the Armada brand. I love what they represent and sort of how they progress the sport and have these different lineups of skis each year. So that's where I'm at. I hope you guys enjoyed the Armada Quiver. Um, I don't use all of them anymore and some get used a lot more than others. I will not be traveling with all of these. It just doesn't make sense. I don't think I've ever lined up my skis like that. That looks pretty dope. So thank you guys for watching. So if you guys in the next episode, take it easy, fam. Peace out.